Hi everyone, so we're still on differentiation. We've done the chain rule, we've done the product rule, and now we've got the quotient rule. What's quite nice about the quotient rule is actually it comes from the product rule. If I see it as u times by v to the minus one, that's where my quotient rule formula has come from. Uh, most books do it with u and v, so we've got v du dx minus u dv dx over v squared. Our formula booklet, just to make it a little bit more haphazard, uses f of x and g of x, but it isn't the formula booklet. Right, so the top is f of x. So f of x is 3x plus 1, f dash of x is 3. The bottom bit is g of x. So g of x is x plus 5, g dash of x is 1. If I use the formula, so dy by dx is f dash of x g of x minus f of x g dash of x all over the bottom bit, g of x all squared. If I put everything in the right place, in theory I get full marks, but it's nice to tidy it up. So f dash of x is 3, g of x is x plus 5, f of x is 3x plus 1, g dash of x is 1. All that is over uh, x plus 5, all squared. So if I tidy it up, it can be a little bit nifty on the top line. If you think about what you've got, you've got 3 times x, minus a 3x times 1, so that bit goes. I've got 3 times 5 is 15, minus a 1, so I've got 14 on the top. On the bottom I've got x plus 5, all squared. There you go, job done. Yeah. So look at this next one then. <laughs> That's quite easy, isn't it? Really? Right, so let's have a look. So the top is f of x, so f of x is 1 plus x squared. So f dash of x is 2x. g of x is e to the x. So g dash of x is also e to the x. Put it in the formula, so dy by dx is f dash of x g of x minus f of x g dash of x over the bottom, which is g of x all squared. Um, so f dash of x is a 2x, g of x is an e to the x, minus f of x, which is a 1 plus x squared, and a g dash of x is an e of x, all over e of x all squared. The Right, so, if you look, I can actually divide through by your e of x. Because the e of x is a factor on the top. Sometimes people aren't really happy with that. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll just write it out with the e of x as a factor on the top. So if I take out e of x as a factor on the top, I've got 2x minus 1 minus x squared. And on the bottom, I've got an e of x all squared. So that e of x at the front as a factor will cancel with that one. So what I've got then is dy by dx is... Uh, I'm going to make it look a little bit, because that minus is there at the front. I'm going to pull the minus out as a factor. So I've got x squared minus 2x plus 1 all over e to the x. It's a show that type thing, so you want to do an adverse amount of work, don't you? So the x squared minus 2x plus 1 is an x minus 1 all squared. And then if I bring up the e to the x as an e to the minus x, there we go, it's all done. It's perfect for us. So that's your first page done in five minutes. I might do the next one as well. If I do example three as well. Oh, we've been doing it too much. Right, so f of x is x. So f dash of x is 1. 
that g of x is 1 plus x squared all to the power of a half. I have to differentiate that, so that's the chain rule. And what's quite nice is I've taught you how to do the chain rule in your head. So you differentiate inside the bracket, which is a 2x, and then you deal with the bracket. So the bracket to the power of half, if you differentiate it, is a half of the bracket, take one off the power, minus a half. So if I tidy up my g dash of x, the 2 and the half then cancel, so the x 1 plus x squared to the minus a half. Or the other two just cancel that out. Right, so let's put it in the formula. So dy by dx is, so you know um, that the formula is f dash of x, so that's 1, times by g of x, so that's 1 plus x squared to the half, minus f of x, which is x, times by g dash of x, which is a times by an x, 1 plus x squared to the minus a half, all over the bottom line all squared, which is a 1 plus x squared to the power of half all squared. So let's just tidy it up a little bit. So dy by dx is 1 plus, oh I know, I know something wrong there, that should be a plus half, shouldn't it? Yeah, that should be a plus half. Sorry about that. 1 plus x squared to the half minus x squared and 1 plus x squared to the minus a half. I was thinking about that minus a half because it can be a little bit messy. With a 1 plus x squared because we've got a power of half all squared. Now what you can do, you can write the top line as 1 plus x squared to the half minus x squared over 1 plus x squared to the minus a half and then combine it as a, single fr uh, as a single fraction. But we can be a little bit sneaky here. We can remove this by multiplying the top and bottom by 1 plus x squared to the half over 1 plus x squared to the half. So let's have a think about that then. We're in our room here, should we run to it smaller? 1 plus x squared to the half times by 1 plus x squared to the half. So we've got 1 plus x squared to the half multiplied by a 1 plus x squared to the half. That's just going to be a 1 plus x squared. Then minus an x squared 1 plus x squared to the minus a half multiplied by a 1 plus x squared to the half. Those are going to cancel then to Then over a 1 plus x squared times by, oops, wrong colour, a 1 plus x squared to the half. I've not got a lot of room here to do it. I really should have thought through. But these, the two here, they become a 1 plus x squared. These two here cancel themselves out. They come they become like a 1 plus x squared to the power of 0, which is 1. So that's a minus x squared. The bottom is a power 1 times by the same power a half. So it becomes a 1 plus x squared to the power 3 over 2. So my final answer, if I can sneak it in somewhere, because I've not really left myself enough room, is 1 over 1 plus x squared to the power 3 over 2. People seriously do not like that part of it, where I multiply through by the 1 plus x squared to the half on the top and bottom. The more you do, the easier it is. Right, there's one for you there. Please make sure you have a go at that one. Uh, so you can see with this one, they've actually multiplied through by two blocks of x minus 7 to the half, and a 2 x minus 7 to the half to get it to work. So the x minus 7 to the half times by x minus 7 to the half gives me x minus 7. The x minus 7 to the minus a half times by x minus 7 to the half becomes a 1. Right, my time's run out more than everybody.